Um, my name is Ryan Clary. I'm 44. I'm a, a career journalist. I'm from Harbor Grace. That's uh, where I grew up. I graduated in 1984, and uh, my, under my yearbook picture, under Ambition, 1984 yearbook, it said journalist. That's what I've done for 20 years. Now I'm running for politics. Because I think it's time for a sea change in political, in uh, Canadian politics, in Newfoundland and Labrador politics. I'm running because I'm not happy with the leadership that we have. I knock on a lot of doors and people are, are scared for the future in terms of one without Danny Williams. Um, people don't see any, people are happy with some of the leaders that are there. And I think I have something to offer in terms of uh, a vision for the future for Newfoundland and Labrador. Things I want to do. Things that I think that need to be done. Democracy means freedom. Freedom of the press, number one, right off the bat, is near and dear to my heart. Freedom of the press, and there's not enough of that. Um, in, even in the Korean Labrador, even in our democracy, there are always pressures on the press. To print, to print, to print. Uh, it means freedom to vote for who I want to vote. It means freedom to express myself any way I want to express myself, women freedom, of course. It means um, freedom to travel, freedom to speak, freedom. Too bad you weren't with me this morning when I was at Tim Hortons in Mount Pearl because uh, I spoke with a man who, I guess he was about 50, and uh, I go to Tim Hortons in the morning and I introduce myself to people at the table and tell them who I am, who I am and what I'm about. Anyway, this one particular gentleman is about 50 odd. He has a um, physically challenged son at home. He told me about his son and he said that uh, um, his son is living on $8,000 a year. He's an adult but he's physically challenged. And then he ripped into me about how much um, MPs make, $160,000 a year. And he said, that's ridiculous. He brought up the constituency allowance scandal in Newfoundland and Labrador, where politicians of all different parties were caught with their hand in the till, taking from taxpayers. How do I think uh, people feel about politicians? I think that, uh, I don't use words like trust or promise, because people are just mad at me, tell me to get out of your face. Um, I, I don't think that politicians have a, uh, a good reputation at all. I'm hoping I can change that. And people look at me when I say that, and they say, well, yeah, you say that now, but when you get in the office, we'll see. By through transparency, through uh, openness. Um, I'm 44, like I said earlier, but I still believe I can change the world in a whole bunch of different ways. I think our political system needs a whole shakeup. I'm not happy with the status quo. Not for this country, not for Newfoundland and Labrador, not for St. John's South Mountain. So I plan to shake it up. Hmm. 25 words or less, huh? The role of the federal government is to help the provinces get along, is to keep the country united, is to collect taxes and distribute them to the provinces. It's to uh, keep us as one big happy family, I guess. Ten brothers and sisters, territories. Act as a parent, I guess. To be in touch with the grassroots right off the bat. To be in touch with uh, the people and know what their needs and concerns are. To represent them. But also, an MP has to have their own mind and their own vision, and to follow that as well. I'm not just a sheep for the New Democrats, I'm not just a sheep for the people. I'm also my own self. I represent them, and I represent myself. Um, I like to think it's a little both. I like to think that people see my name and they want to vote for me because they know me through the Independent or through open line shows or through my writings, my blog. But I know that uh, people are also voting for the New Democrats who look at what's happening nationally in the polls or whatever. Layton, um, I'm supported by my leader, Jack Layton. People don't just vote for me, I know that. They also vote for Jack Layton. They vote for the principles and the fundamentals of the New Democrats.
you have to ask them. You have to ask the people what a vote for me would mean. A vote for me in terms of Newfoundland, what I like to think it means, is a vote for the future of Newfoundland and Labrador. A vote for uh, a vote for preparation for life after oil and gas. A vote for uh, a resurrection and rebuilding of the fishery. A vote for a national energy policy whereby we could take energy from the upper lower Churchill and transmit it across Quebec and not have to bring it back here because we can't deal with Quebec. It's, it's a vote for the future. I'm, I want to change the status quo. I want to shake things up. A vote for me is a vote for... I have a history of it when I was with the Independent, for example. A vote for me is a vote for change. I've spent my life researching and writing, so I have a background. And when it comes to the background of Newfoundland and Labrador, and most every ma major story of the past 20 years, I've covered from the fall of the fishery as a fisheries reporter with the Telegram in the early 90s to um, the editor of the Independent and breaking the breast cancer testing scandal led to the Cameron Inquiry to a cost-benefit analysis of Confederation just before Danny took down the Maple Leafs in front of the provincial government buildings to a complete review of emergency response times. Again, when I was with the independent of uh, Cormorant helicopters out of Gander in regards to response to emergencies at sea with fishing vessels or whatever. You name a major story in this province in the past 20 years and I've researched it and I've written about it and I know it well. Um, so I have the background, and I also have uh, an idea of how to move forward into the future. Speaking of, um, shaking things up, being a maverick, uh, being a bit of a rebel, um, I think we need that. I'm not, uh, I'm a new Democrat, but I'm not a sheep. I'm going to stand by Newfoundland and Labrador and I'm going to do what I think is right. I'm going to hear the people and what they have to say. Uh, but I have my own mind, like I said earlier. Um, I have more hair. <laughs> uh, no, but that, even that, I'm comfortable with that. I'm, you know, um, I'm saying to somebody the other day, I'm, I'm happy at being 44. Um, Sometimes I need more patience. Um, I try to live my life uh, as an example to my kids. I've got two boys, and I try to do the right thing. I try to take the high road. Um, I, I be nice to people, be kind to people, respectful. I'm not always successful, but I try to learn from that and do the right thing. Um, I guess a bit more patient. I've uh, sometimes I'm impatient about the things that happen to this place and, this, and our people. And uh, I guess I can have some more patience. Peter Cashin. Peter Cashin led the uh, anti-Confederate forces in leading up to 1949. And because um, I read all his speeches, I read the transcripts, for example, of the... Um, I read the transcripts of the um, of the Newfoundland Convention, where uh, delegates from all over Newfoundland met for a couple of years to decide Newfoundland's future after a commission of government. And I like what he had to say, and I like the points that he made. That's not to say that I'm an anti-Confederate. I liked him as a man who stood up for what he believed in. And nobody believed in Newfoundland and Labrador more than Peter Cashin. I have other people that I look up to. Um, I, when I was a young reporter, I looked up to people like John Crosby and um, Richard Cashin because these men could speak, because they could take to the stage or to a podium, and they could just, they were mem mesmerizing. I think fabulous speakers. You don't see great speakers anymore, not, not in my opinion, not like you did when, 20 years ago when, when I started off. I uh, respect people like Danny Williams. I respect people who take a stand for what they believe in and are strong enough to take the attacks that are going to come because not everybody will like you. Not everybody will agree with your opinion and they'll express it. And if they don't like you, they'll say it. And you've got to be tough enough and believe in yourself enough to stand by what you say and then take the flack that's sure to come. Danny Cleary, <laughs> number 11, 
Detroit Red Wings. <laughs> he's a hero. I think he's a fighting Newfoundlander. Um, he had a... I kept this quote on the side of my fridge for the longest time. And it was from uh, a TSN commentator. And he was commentating on Danny Cleary. He had a big fight with uh, Chris Pronger. Chris Pronger's a big guy, defenseman. And he went... Uh, Danny went toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with him. And uh, at the end of the fight, the, the commentator said... Uh, there's a six-inch height difference between Cleary and Pronger, which Cleary makes up for by being by being a Newfoundlander. I really like that. Um, other heroes in BC, my kids, are strong in ways that um, I respect. Um, the women in my life, um, Jack Harris, Lorraine Michael, Jack Layton. Um, the people who walk in off the street at my campaign headquarters and volunteer, and I never seen them before in my life. A little girl walked into the office uh, last week. She's in grade four, and she, her sister, her older sister, who's an adult, took her into the office because this little girl wanted to meet me. She wanted to meet me and uh, take a sign for her lawn. They had a vote in their school about a, a vote the great fours of who they vote for if there was an election. She voted for me. She wanted me to meet me. And I thought that was pretty cool. So I kind of look at her as a little hero and that uh, and she pays attention to politics. I like that. I like young people who vote, who express an interest in politics. That's important. We don't have enough of that. Maria, what's the name of the book I, you just lent me? Um, the Imperfectionist. The Imperfectionist. It's a book about um, a bunch of people who work at a newspaper. It's an international newspaper based in um, Rome. I just read, I just finished it the other night. I've been reading it during the election because it's, I can pick it up at the end of the day. It has nothing to do with the stuff that I'm involved in day to day. And um, it's pretty close to the mark in terms of how journalists live their, li live their lives. Um, yeah, and uh, what I read every I read constantly in terms of, uh, you know, the Globe, the Telegram, all the stuff on webs, the bloggers, the Independent, the Scope. I'll read whatever I can get my hand on, Northeast Avalon Times. But the book I just finished reading was The Imperfectionists. Because we are imperfectionists, us journalists. Welcome. As opposed to get out. <laughs> Welcome. That'd be great. Thank you very much, Ryan.